because. The problem with that is, um, as they said in the autopsy report, because of the extensive tissue degeneration that occurred prior to autopsy, some of these diagnostic findings could not be definitely identified. The other main diagnostic criteria can only be assessed in living patients. This girl was found in her bed with, yeah. uh, she had uh, foamy, bloody mucus that was on her bed that came out of her uh, mouth and nose. She never woke up. She died in her sleep. Now, ARVD, it is a cardiomyopathy. It affects only one in about 5,000 people. It is known as a cause of sudden cardiac death in young people. Many cases of death occur in the home during sedentary activities. Now, um, there are girls that the moms go home, their daughters are in their bed, and they're gone. Uh, one gal, she got up, talked to her mom, went to take a shower, relaxed, and she knew enough something was going on that she turned the spray away from her in the shower, sat down, put her head on the side of the tub, and passed away. Her heart stopped. Now, the other symptoms, and we are seeing this more and more with girls, they are having abdominal pain, decreased exercise tolerance, a lot of dizziness, difficulty breathing, and a lot of them are saying that they have, uh, you know, they feel pressure in the chest, tightness in the chest, you know, their fatigue, mental confusion, palpitations, they're fainting, and the other thing is they are complaining about, uh, you know, the, the pain in the chest. So we're looking at a cardiac issue here. Next one. And this is a 19-year-old female uh, out of New Zealand. That's the next slide while you're waiting for it to come up, Cynthia. Okay, here it is. Now, when she got her first vaccination, she developed hand warts. Now, that's an allergic reaction. Now, that's also telling me, and we don't know what type of wart it was. Was it an HPV 6 or 11? We don't know. But she did have a reaction in November of 08 when she had her second vaccination again. She had another reaction. The warts returned. So now we're looking at, in March of 2009, she had her third HPV vaccination. Now, listen to this, people, okay? She had pins and needles and tingling in her hands for no reason. That's circulatory. That could be the heart. <coughs> we're, lo <coughs> we're looking at night sweats, feeling clumsy in April of 2009 knocking things over. She's losing the feeling in the hands, which could be, you know, like touch, and a certain degree of numbness. That's also circulatory. July mm -hmm. of 09, we're looking at, she intermittently complained of chest pain and a racing heart and abdominal pain. Now, what does that sound like? ARVD. August of 09, she started having quite a few headaches. They're saying she had a cold that never got better. And then in sep now, one of the things I want you to understand is cardiac issues sometimes take time. We all know that the heart problems can be a silent killer. This young 19-year-old that had the world in front of her, who had her whole future in front of her, she died in her sleep. ARVD. Okay, next slide. And this is where we move into L-histidine, histamine, and the hearts. And this is uh, what uh, Cynthia has been putting together. Go ahead, Cynthia. Are okay. You, are you on? Okay, I, I was able to quickly pull up to my script. What slide number is this? Can you tell me? Um, I believe that we're on slide 40, 48 or 49. Yeah, 49, uh, uh, I believe. Okay. Now, one of the things, um, you know, we have to look at is, in, and Leslie brought up earlier, is the, the injection with histidine. Okay. 
with histidine, you know, if there is already a family history of allergies, that predisposes them to elevated levels of histamine. And the additional histidine could result in a release of large amounts of histamine. This could cause vasodilation and a stimulation of the heart's H3 receptors, which could cause arrhythmia, chest pain. And this could also cause myocardial ischemia. Now, if you're looking at the initial overload of histamine causing dilation of the circulatory system, you know, there's now going to be an excess of no refederating and H3 norepinephrine. histamine. Yeah. Yeah, no ref blah, blah. Norepinephrine. Yeah, norepinephrine. Go ahead. Now we're on okay, slide. I'm trying to go too go fast ahead. here. Receptors That's all right. to, over, uh, <laughs> to overset the abundance of this histamine. So what we have is we have the initial dilation of the circulatory system. That's why on the product inserts you're looking at a lot of girls are fainting. It, it, they stated on there, fainting. They have the girls lay down for 15, 20 minutes. This is expected. But this is a circulatory system issue. We could be looking at damaging of the heart here, cardiac dysfunction or arrhythmia. And this could be happening with the first vac vaccination. So, you the, know, I have to interject. I have to interject here as a as a feminist. I mean, you know, fainting goes along with weak of heart. Ah, and women are weak of heart. I mean, there's all these myths about women and fainting and and the weaker sex and blah blah blah. We have, we've taken the whole myth out of that whole crap, and we're actually Cynthia <laughs> tying it right into the heart. And this is a real issue. And yet, you know, we hear it in the news reports about girls fainting. Well, it's because they're girls. No. It's because this vaccine is affecting their heart. It's time right. to get rid of this, people. Go ahead, Cynthia. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the uh, circulatory system, there's something that happens with these, va with these vaccines is that you have three doses. The first dose is caused the ch cause, uh, called the challenge. The second and third is cause, called the re-challenge. Now, you're looking at three times damage to the heart here, and it's silent. So what you have here is known cardiac issues that are leading to arrest. They can be silent. They do not occur overnight. They can happen over a period of time and are unique to every individual. This could account for the time frame between, you know, the differences of the 18-year-old, which was 10 months after first vaccination, and the 19-year-old one year after the first vaccination. Okay, next one. You know, you're looking at the initial vaccination, like I said, is the challenge. And... What basically this means is like with the first vaccine, it, that is like priming the pump. The immune system saying, oh, wow, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go get it. And then you get the second shot two months later, and it's like, wow, there it is. I'm going to get it. And now it's going into overdrive, and it's going out there, and it's going to attack everything to get at it. And now four months after that, the immune system still going along in overdrive, you're hitting it again. It's now into hyperdrive. It's not going to care what it's hitting. Now, what we're looking at here, okay, is that the only immune response that's being uh, looked at in these uh, studies is the IgE. All that is is saying that there's so much, so many antibodies in the system. So what they should be looking at is the IgE, like in Edward. It is not monitored, and it is well known to be the most damaging to the body. The IgE is like shooting a shotgun. You not only hit the target, you're hitting all the good tissue around it. And in the, uh, what we do know is in the VARS reports after June 2006, that shows the HPV vaccines comprise 27% of all ad vaccine adverse reactions. 27%. We are getting reports of autoimmune disease like ALS, MS, John Barre syndrome. Young girls are experiencing adverse events months to years after the initial vaccinations. And the kicker here is the immune response has been studied for at least 36 months with a slow decline in antibodies. And they're basing this on efficacy is supposed to expect in the last five to seven years. We don't we do know if the... We don't know if the IgE is still active. I mean, it is still going around the body, firing off, you know, the uh, histamine, 
that is on the mast cells throughout the body. The histamine is, you know, in the heart. It's in the uh, vasculatory, the uh, vasculatory system. It's in the brain stem. It's in the spine. It's in the brain. It's in organs of your body. It's in